Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody uh, had uh, a good day. Happy Tuesday. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody is uh, trading well and living your best life. If you are brand new to the channel, please like, share, and subscribe uh, so we can go on this uh, daily journey together trying to put, the kit, put together the pieces of this very, very uh, odd and aggressive uh, puzzle known as uh, as the trading world, right? So let's talk about it. So yesterday, uh, if you guys remember last night's video, uh, was very, very lethargic, right? Uh, we, we probably saw one of the uh, least volume-driven days of the year. Uh, we talked about everything was stuck in the channel and that we really needed to, one of these channels to either get above or, be, you know, or below so we can take advantage of a potential measure, potential average true range uh, in the stock market. And, you know, the one case I made yesterday uh, for names, you know, like a NVIDIA, for example, uh, and we'll get to the pivots in a second, like names like NVIDIA, for example, and Microsoft, uh, they, you know, they, they didn't make the same efforts, even though they had really, really great run-ups and nobody's taken away that. Uh, but we've seen the last four days of lower highs on the queues, again, decreasing volume, shrinking ranges, but we saw kind of what the opposite was uh, on NVIDIA and Microsoft. And, you know, we talked about it last night's video. If they start losing the five-day moving average, uh, they should get pulled, right? And that's exactly what happened. Again, we'll get to the to the pivots in a second. But to the, to the Bulls, you know, to the Bulls' credit, um, it does feel like, you know, and every single day you saw, I, I think, SIVB go, go down like 90% today. You, you see slowly but surely that, you know, this, this, this narrative of the banking crisis, it's just slowly but surely get, getting quieter and more tone deaf and eventually it's just going to be part of like everyday life like another bank failing is really not going to be a, i don't want to use the word not a big deal but it's not going to be a big deal just the same way after like three four five months it's like nobody really uh put too much stock into another person getting COVID. eventually we learned to kind of live with things that's what the market is doing to the bulls credit right to the bulls credit um we did two things today number one uh, last night's video, we talked about that 306, 307 level uh, that the Bulls needed to uh, defend. They didn't defend it, right? That was the whole point. They didn't defend it. They started getting pulled. Uh, cues went all the way down. Uh, but to the Bulls' credit, and this is kind of where, uh, you know, we started trying to put the pieces back into the puzzle, the Bulls came back and reclaimed the 10-day moving average. It looked very, very bleak uh, for, you know, for a very good portion of the day. Uh, you had semiconductors uh, definitely leading uh, the market lower, right? Uh, at one point, uh, NVIDIA got slammed, uh, AMD got slammed, you know, all the usual people got slammed. Um, MU came out with earnings after the close. Um, not a bad move. You got a 2% move. Uh, let's see if the semiconductors can wake up on Micron's earnings. But the point is, this is what we didn't want to see going into uh, today's well tomorrow's trading day is the market to go back into the range and unfortunately because we did have a kind of a rally here off the bottom range here we got right back above uh, the 10-day moving average which was 307 so here's the key levels kind of going into it right it's not great that we we rallied back because i would at least preferred to get more value out of uh tomorrow's session today we had some pretty good value this is what really shows you uh, being patient, you don't have to trade every single day like yesterday versus today when things started expanding because there was a little bit of intermediate uh, technical damage. So th these are the levels we have to watch uh, going into tomorrow, okay? Uh, for the bulls to start mustering a rally, again, maybe uh, Micron, maybe Lulu, right? Lulu is stretching after earnings. Thank you, I'll be here all week, right? 4% move on, 4.5% uh, move on Lulu. Uh, but the bulls really need to uh, reclaim back the five-day moving average, which is this 309 level. If the bears need to want to uh, expand more of the selling, uh, they have to reconfirm uh, today's lows, uh, roughly that 304.70s, because 
If they can, then you got 303, you got 300, and then you have ultimately the 50-day moving average. But the frustrating part about today was not the action in the morning. The action in the morning was great, and you felt like we were going to close at the lows. The frustrating part about uh, today's session towards the afternoon is after I logged off, everything came back. Like literally everything came back, and it really took out a lot of the value uh, going into tomorrow's session. Now, again, is there... Is there plays? There's always going to be plays, right? It's it's not a question of there's going to be plays or not plays. There's there's a big difference between, you know, putting on a trade that works than making money, right? If we would have closed below the 306 level today, then we would have had measure potential another three four dollars. That would have been a potential to make money, right? A trade that you know stock that goes from ten to ten and a half. Yeah, it's just a winning trade. So the market guys kind of, you know, have a, had a warped sense of humor, kind of threw a little bit of a curveball going into the close. But but again, we're professionals, right? That's the whole point. All of us. When I say we're professionals, that means all of us. Anybody, I don't care if you're trading for 15 minutes or 15 years, as soon as you open up your first account and you deposit your funds, you're a professional trader. Whether you decide like a trade, to, like a professional trader over time or a short period of time or to live out your full potential, that's to be determined, right? That's not on the cards. But, you know, I look at the market today and I go, wow, you know, if we would have just closed up the lows, we would have had some really phenomenal setups for tomorrow. Uh, we, we had some pretty, pretty good ones for today. But the point is now that we're back kind of stuck in the middle of the channels, we did put on this little bit of a baby hammer. So hopefully, the, you know, the cues can start reclaiming back that 309 level. And if that does, you start seeing more stocks kind of waking back to the upside. But at least now we know both sides of the spectrum, 309 to the upside, right? 309 to the upside uh, and roughly 304 and change to the downside. And again, everything else is going to be in between. Uh, when you look at names, uh, and again, well, let's start, let's start talking about the pivots. Uh, look, we, we talked about in the video last night, we talked about Microsoft last night, we talked about the queues last night. As you can imagine, after last night's, uh, after yesterday's close, you weren't going to have 65,000 setups. This is impossible. So we tried to identify the ones that potentially could, you know, give us the biggest measure of potential. Last night's video, we talked about queues, we talked about Microsoft, we talked about NVIDIA. Uh, Tesla, you know, got saved again today, had, a, had an upside pivot. Uh, had an upside pivot, had a downside pivot. Obviously, the downside pivot confirmed, uh, got down a little bit. But again, the market got saved. Whoever the goalie is, uh, if, you know, to kind of uh, uh, kind of steal a, a you know st steal from the, the hockey world. The goalie was standing on its head. The bully was the, the bulls were standing on their head. Every kick saved today possible uh, to kind of save the day at least uh, for today's session. So let's talk about it. Right, last night we covered uh, Nvidia 263.50. If it builds below, can flush. Uh, 258's potential. That's the 10-day moving average. And that was the move. And the video had a phenomenal, phenomenal move. So we talked about this last night. It got right to the 10-day moving average. Uh, it lost the 63.50s. I said it could get into the 258s. That's the low of uh, the day. The 258.50s is the 10-day moving average. Really nice move there. Uh, Microsoft, again, we covered this last night's video. Uh, 275 held three times of builds below can flush. Here was Mr. Softy, never rallied, right? Never rallied the rest of the market. So lost to 75 that it held three times, got below the 10-day moving average. And that's the frustrating part. If everything would have just closed at the lows, we would have had a lot of measure potential back down. But a nice $3 move on Microsoft uh, to the downside. Uh, Tesla, again, not a big move, got saved. Uh, I had a pivot, one pivot we were prepared for on uh, 97.40 to the upside. Obviously never got there. Uh, 187, if it builds below, can flush. Again, only a $2 move, uh, only a $2 move on Tesla and then came back like everything else. And uh, coin, I still like, never got down to the 60-50 level. And here was the big move. This is where I really thought, this is where I really thought this market was going to implode. And it, it really looked like that for a long, long time. You know, Q's got killed. You know, they, you know, they went from 307.50 out three times pre-market, if it builds below, can flush. So here is, you know, here is the Q's, right? So here's the... Here's the 60-minute view of the Qs, right? So here's the 60-minute view of the Qs. Let's take all this out, right? So you see this whole area? This is where I said 307.50, if it builds below, can flush, right? The pre-market low, 307.62, 307.62, 307.58. So once it started building below the uh, 307.50s level, uh, stock got hit. Stock went all the way down uh, into the 304s, um, you know, and then we just started rallying at the close for just for whatever reason. But... It is what it is. So the value definitely returned today. Again, I've, I've always uh, said and maintained this. It's not how many you, you trade. It's how many you trade properly. Uh, we talked about in the video. We talked about Microsoft. We talked about the key levels and the queues. 
and luckily uh, everything uh, played out. Uh, if you guys remember a couple of weeks ago, we started talking about the WWE. There was a buyer that came in. And again, this is this is where we talk about follow the option flow, right? Follow the money. If you guys remember, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we started talking about there was a buyer that came in for the April $100 calls. He spent about $5 million worth of premium. And since then, the stock has been on a really, really great move. And then today, David Faber of CNBC talked about speculation uh, for a potential uh, takeover, the stock spiked uh, all the way into the 92s. Again, guys, always remember, somebody does know something. And when somebody's putting down $5 million, you know, with 50, you know, $18 out of the money calls with a one month expiration. Anyway, congratulations to a lot of you guys who are still holding this thing in the webinar. Great, great uh, move for two, uh, for, for two weeks. But hey, again, it is what it is. It really does show how somebody always uh, does know something. So look, going into tomorrow, it's very tough to find, you know, it's very, very tough to find some long setups. Um, you know, despite, you know, despite this little baby hammer, um, I, I think we're going to have to wait till like the, probably the 10 or 11 o'clock channel for, you know, for these stocks to try to get above their, uh, to their ranges. It's going to be very, very tough. I, I, I could see the market rallying tomorrow morning. Um, I'd like to see how the market perceives this MU earnings. I'd like to see uh, if the semiconductors could kind of wake everything up. But if they start getting faded, we're going to start getting faded back. So, I'm, you know, look, I'm 50-50 going into tomorrow. I, I don't love anything. You know, I don't love anything. Um, like, yeah, I like some things, but I definitely don't like love anything going into tomorrow. Um, check out the smaller stock. Um, check out the smaller stock, ETNB. This is one that looks interesting. So, ETNB had this really, really big breakout. Uh, is resting now for the last couple of days. Check this out, right? You see how it stopped back-to-back -back days? If it could just get above this channel here, maybe this thing wakes up here. Uh, Roku looks interesting. Not great, not good, but looks interesting. Roku's held uh, the 50-day moving average once, twice, three times a lady. Let's keep an eye on Roku tomorrow. If this thing starts getting below this channel, uh, maybe this thing gets hit. I want to watch that. Uh, everything else is kind of in the middle of the range again. You know, Tesla, you know, I'm, I'm watching on both sides tomorrow, right? If you look at the 60-minute view on Tesla, this is a bad wick here. You know, for Tesla to wake up here, it's going to have to really start getting above this whole channel here. And obviously, if it starts losing today's lows, then, yeah, you could have some some bigger uh, bigger stretch for tomorrow. But, yeah, this is the type of market that the volume is definitely drying up. Uh, you can see that now for, like, the last couple of days. Thank goodness, at least for today, uh, we got some measured potential, right? Uh, we got some measured potential, some pretty good value. But going into tomorrow, again, you have to kind of you know, take off, you know, take off the rose colored glasses and kind of what we talked about yesterday when there's, you know, when there's a potential middle of a channel type of day, you got to act accordingly, right? You can't, you know, you can't be, uh, you can't be overly aggressive. You can't be uh, over, you can't anticipate and you definitely can't uh, try to predict to try to overthink. Let the market, again, let the market tell us what it wants to do next. Let the market dictate uh, and scream at us which way the price action is going to flow because the hardest thing to do is trade. And the even more harder thing to do is trade properly. So if you wait and you're patient, again, a day like today will be your payoff. Guys, have a great night, everybody. Stay blessed, folks. And I will see you tomorrow night on the video. Take